In this video, I want to show you how we can interpret the output from a two-group mean comparison t-test. Here's the number of observations or respondents who are male, the number of female, and the total sample. Here we see the mean value of social trust for males, the mean value for females, the mean values for the entire sample, and most importantly, the difference in means between males and females. Now notice this, this is a negative value. And that results from the fact that this is how difference is calculated. It's the value for males minus the value for females. And in this case, females have a higher value, so it results in a negative difference. Had females been the first category, this would have been a positive difference. More often than not, we're simply interested in the absolute value of that difference. Positive or negative comes into play if we actually had specified um, a direction to the difference whether we had specified that females or males would have a higher average level of social trust. And I'll say a little bit more about that in a second. So what we do is we take that difference in between the means, divided by the standard error of that difference, and calculate a t-statistic, which is in this case negative 2.94 with a degrees of freedom of 4367. And the question is, what's the probability of getting a t-statistic of that size by chance, a fluke sample? And this is where we have to turn to p-values. Now note that our null hypothesis is that the difference in means is zero. And we can specify one of three alternative hypotheses, two of which can be directional. So for example, let's say we had hypothesized that females would have a higher mean level of social trust. In that case, as we see here, that results in a negative difference, again, given the ordering, the mean of male minus the mean of female, if we had hypothesized female being larger, that would result in a negative value below zero. So that's where this would be our alternative hypothesis, where the difference is less than zero, and this would be our p-value. Alternatively, if we had specified that males would have a higher level of social trust than females, we would expect the difference to be greater than zero, and this would be our alternative hypothesis, and this would be our p-value of reference. More often than not, we don't really specify a direction. We simply state more generically, that the difference does not equal zero. And this explanation point refers to does not. And that's what we call a two-tailed test of significance, whereas these others are one-tailed test of significance. And here we have a p-value of 0 0.0033. So what we can say is that we have a t-statistic of negative 2.9405 degrees of freedom of 4367, and a p-value that is less than 0 0.01. So there's a very low probability that the difference we're seeing is simply due to chance, and that we can be quite confident that there is a difference in the genders in social trust in the population to which we're making inferences. Now that difference is very unlikely to be exactly this. This is, again is the difference based on a sample. The difference in the population between the genders is likely something different. What we can say is that with a 95% degree of confidence, the difference in the means of the genders on social trust in the population is somewhere in this range, in this interval. Now, you'll notice that this interval does not encompass the value zero. If it did, we wouldn't have been able to reject the possibility that the difference in the population is zero, which again is our null hypothesis. And this p-value would have been above 0.05. But because this was below 0.05, our 95% confidence journal will not encompass the value zero. So that's how you would interpret the t-test output, and one could write it up in a number of ways. Here's a, a, a short form, and again, if you were to write it in a, in a little bit more of an elaborated narrative form, it would look something like this.